Welcome to the 10 by 12 studio. I'm Steph Greenberg, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to approach multi-layer cloth. This is one of several advanced videos on the topic and is not intended for beginners. The character is Melosa, and the character's skin and clothes are attached to a rigify rig with a mix of most samba dance baked onto the IK. There is no dress rig, and the lower dress is skinned to the legs alone. Notice that when animated, the legs go through the lower dress. That's okay because this rig is intended for cloth simulation. The Melosa rig is available for free in the link below. I appreciate any donations. The three clothing items are a cotton-like dress, leather-like vest, and silk or sheer satin-like apron. These items are separated for skinning purposes in the default rig. The scene scale is set to 1, which is considered real-world scale and blender. Melosa is approximately 1.63 meters tall with heels, or 5 feet 4 inches. In this video, I will go entirely through the baseline cloth setup. Weight painting, simulation, some problem solving using shape keys on the collision body, revised weight painting for refinement, and what the variables do when changed. I will discuss how to evolve cloth solutions from scratch, working at different scales and mesh vertex densities, and moving a bake simulation in other videos. I'm going to start by combining the apron, the vest, and the dress into a single mesh. I'm then going to make a collision collection. The first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the body. Next I'll make a copy of the shoes and put those copies into the collision collection. Then I'll combine them into a single mesh. I'm going to rename this so it's easy to distinguish from the rendering body. The rendering body has a mask and subdivision. I don't need those. What I'm going to do next is add collision attributes to it. I want minimum distance set on the collision object. It keeps the mesh from being separated out in weird ways. I also want to check single-sided to keep the cloth from getting stuck inside the skin and being unable to escape. Next I add cloth to the dress. I usually go with quality steps of 6, which is adequate, and reduce the vertex mass to 0.1 kg, which makes it slightly stiffer. And I increase the air density to 3 because I'm going to use the air density as damping. The reason that I want to use vertex mass to make it stiffer is because I'm going to make it very, very loose with very low global stiffness and damping settings ranging from 0.001 to 0.1 instead of the standard 0.5 to 15. What these will do is make the cloth somewhat gooey. I don't have to worry about that because I'm going to fully control it with weight painting. The next thing I'm going to do is create several vertex groups for the dress. The first group I'm going to make is the pin group. Second group I'm going to make is the bend group. Third, shear. Fourth, structural. I use underscore before the group name so that everything goes to the top when I sort by name. That makes these groups a lot easier to find. Now notice that weight paint is in vertex select. Since I have the cuff selected, I'll hide everything but the cuffs by hitting Shift H. I'll select the pin vertex group. I want to give this a value of 0.6 and unhide everything else. I hide the cuffs and then select the pin group again. What I'm going to do is start with the dress. I'll select one vertex and then hit Control L to select all of the connected vertices and then hide everything but the dress. The value that I'll start with is 0.2 for the upper part of the dress. 0.2 means that only 20% of the strength of the armature will be holding on to the cloth of the dress. The rest will be simulated. I'll do some blurring. I'm going to hide the rig because it's getting in the way. I'm going to leave the bottom part of the dress at zero because that's going to be fully simulated. The upper dress will have 20% attached to the armature, enough to keep it following the armature. The bottom of the dress will have no vertices attached to the armature. That's why I don't have a dress rig on it. I'll unhide everything else and uncheck the select box so it doesn't select everything when I unhide. I select a vest vertex, Control L to select connected, Shift H to hide everything but the vest. I hit V so we get rid of the vertices. What I'll use for the vest initially is 0.15. Now I'll keep it a little bit loose. I'll tighten it up with a bend restriction later and I'm going to make the bend 100%. I select the bend vertex group and give the vest a weight of 1 on all the vertices so the max bend setting applies to the whole vest. I 
While I have the vest isolated, I'll select the structure vertex group and paint the whole vest 0.15. I unhide everything else, select and isolate the apron vertices. Select the pin group. I'll assign the apron a value of 0.1, which means it'll be 90% simulated and 10% attached to the rig. I'm going to give it a shear value of 1, so it receives 100% of the max shear setting. The shear setting restricts the side-to-side -side stretching of the cloth. I'll give the structure vertex group a weight of 0.15. It'll get some but not much stretch. I'm going to add a max tension setting later, and the apron will receive 15% of the max tension restriction. Well, let's see what I have so far. I have the bend, I have the pin, I have the shear, I have the structure. I'm going to add some additional structure control to the dress. With the dress isolated, I'll hide the cuffs because I'm not painting them. Now we'll select the structure vertex group. I paint the upper body 0.2 and the lower body 0.5 for a strong resistance to stretching. 0.5 leaves room to tighten up portions of the lower dress without changing the max tension setting. I'll use Shift Space Bar to select the blur tool and blend the weights. I need to pin the apron and the dress to the top of the apron. I'll select the dress and the apron and paint the apron at the top and the dress underneath as if there are strings holding the apron firmly to the body. I'm going to give the brush a value of 1, and I'll make the brush real small. And I'll get both the dress and the apron at the same time. I'll blur that out for a smooth transition between weights. Now I'm ready to do the remaining cloth settings. So I need the pin group. I set the collision quality to 2, which seems low, but quality doesn't quite do what you think it does. And with that low setting, what I have is quickly healing cloth. So if the cloth gets driven through the skin, it comes back out. In this animation, the cloth can get stuck when the arms are down and rubbing against the rib cage. And sometimes the sleeve will go through the rib cage, and you don't want the cloth to get stuck there, and you don't want it to stay deformed when it comes out. So this is a good setting for that. And it also helps with the collisions. I set the distance to 0 0.007 in this case. Any higher and the cloth poofs out from the skin. Any lower and the cloth goes through the skin too easily. I select the collision collection or the collision collection. I then turn on self collision. I'll bring the friction down to 1. That makes the apron slightly cling to the dress a little better. I set self collision distance to 0 0.005 which is adequate. Too much makes the cloth shrivel up and drives the layers apart. Under Property Weights, I set the Structural Group to Struct Vertex Group. I'll set Tension to 15, which keeps it from stretching. Compression makes it bouncy like a spring. I don't really want any of this cloth to act springy, so I'm going to set that to 0.1. I set the Shear Group to Shear Vertex Group, which you might recall is for the apron only. I'm setting that to 0.1. The global setting that I have is 0.01, and that's good for the dress and good for the vest, but for the apron, it allows the apron to kind of flip up in the air more and skew sideways a bit more. So I want to limit that shear. The bending group is set to the bend vertex group. The leather vest will be the only cloth getting the full bend limitation. I'll set the bending value to 5, so the bends are larger than those of the dress and the apron. The global bend setting is 0.1, a small number that allows the cloth to wrinkle as much as its resolution allows. Everything is ready, so now I bake the cloth. The bake takes about 20 minutes or so, and I'm editing out that time. With the baking done, I'm going to do real-time playback. I set playback to frame dropping because my computer is too slow to play every frame. When I hit play, it looks pretty good until the end where a problem is revealed. The leg is penetrating the dress. You might not see that if the apron was opaque and you couldn't see through it. Because the apron is transparent, we see it.
How do I fix the legs without increasing the collision distance for all of the cloth? Increasing the collision distance on all of the cloth will poof it out, including around the arms and the neck. This can cause collision detection problems when the upper body is very close to the body, and this is where having the separate body for the collisions comes in. I select the collision body, go back to frame zero, go to shape keys, and I'm going to make a shape key called bigger legs. What the bigger legs shape key will do is push the cloth out a little more only where I sculpt the leg outward so that I don't get that interpenetration with the body that is being rendered. I'm selecting sculpt mode and then I'm selecting the inflate tool. I'll make the brush a little larger and let's hide the clothes. I need to put the blend shape value at one or we don't see the sculpt. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the sides of the leg bigger. I have X-Mirror on, so that does both legs at the same time since both legs have penetration issues. I want to get the front of the leg as well. I'll scroll the shape key value so we can see what we've sculpted. That's looking pretty good, so that should push the dress far enough away. There's another thing that I noticed, which is the chest area doesn't really hold its shape, and I'm going to try and improve that. I'll go into weight paint mode. I'm going to isolate the dress. I'm setting the weight value to 0.3. I have the pin vertex group selected. What I'm doing is I'm painting on a bra to hold her shape. I'm blurring the edges so the transition between weights is smooth. Next, I'll isolate the vest. I'm going to reduce the vertex weighting on the bottom from 0.15 to 0.12 so the bottom edges flap more and increase it on the top from 0.15 to 0.18 to complement the bra I painted on the dress. I'll loosen the front middle edges so that they separate more with movement. I'm blurring everything for smooth transitions. I'll isolate the dress and increase the structural weight value to reduce stretching at the waist and move it down lower in the dress for more dramatic twisting of the cloth. I'll go back to object mode and return to rendered shading. I'll save the scene file and call it baseline first revision. Time to bake the revised cloth simulation. The revision is baked. I'll save it with the simulation cache. Let's take a look at the changes. The top has definitely improved. When I hide the collision body, the leg penetration disappears. The leg expanding shape key work. I forgot to put the cloth before the subdivision modifier, so I'll fix that now. I'm going to render this in EV. We'll take a look at what this looks like as an animation without drop frames. The render is finished. Let's see what I have. Nice. No more legs penetrating the cloth. The vest and chest area are keeping their shape a bit better, and the flow looks good. The sleeves have a pretty good looseness to them. If I were to do another revision pass, I would loosen them a bit more by painting the sleeves with a lower weight like 0.1 instead of 0.2. That would make the sleeves more floppy. I could also lower the structure on the bottom of the dress from a value of 0.5 to 0.3 to give it a little more bounce and stretch. But I'm leaving it because the cloth is good as it is. The dress flows nicely from waist to bottom. Nice twist as she's turning. I have a good starting baseline, I have a really nice first revision. If I was in production, I might refine these things a bit more. Maybe I'd add a bit more vertex density to the mesh, which right now is fairly low. If the clothes had a higher vertex density, I would get more wrinkles. It would also increase the simulation bake time. I'll do that in another video, for now it's complete enough. The next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate what happens when I change some of the settings. I've been using a setting of 3 for air viscosity to add damping. 
but for the settings demonstration I'm setting it to 1 so that it's easier to see the differences the other settings make. I'll also demonstrate changing the pin, collision quality, and property weights values, as well as gravity. All of these settings, as well as the collision body's shape key, can be animated using keyframes. I'm bringing the dress back. Animating settings is a whole other level of artistic control and problem solving. I'll look for a way to clearly demonstrate that in a future video. The next thing I'll do is change numbers and show what those do. Changing settings can result in collision failures and wardrobe malfunctions which is why I started with solutions that work for this character. When the speed multiplier value is increased, it stiffens the cloth, which can interfere with collision detection. When the value is decreased, it loosens cloth, making it lighter and more stretchy. Collision detection and reaction is improved, but at extreme lower values, the cloth sim creates wardrobe malfunctions. Vertex mass works in opposition to the speed multiplier. Higher values give the cloth more mass and increases stretching and bounciness. Lower values make the cloth stiffer because of reduced mass but also make cloths more airy and buoyant. Air viscosity is good for reliable damping. Increasing values slow the cloth and decreased values let it flow more quickly. Increased values also interfere with collision detection and reaction. This is simpler and more reliable than the settings labeled damping. Pin group and pin stiffness keep the cloth attached to the armature. Weight painting makes pin stiffness proportional, lower values being simulated more, higher values simulated less. Lowering pin stiffness makes the cloth more fluid and less attached to the armature. Raising it makes the cloth entirely controlled by the armature. Collision quality. Higher values in this setting make cloth get stuck in collision objects and other cloth. Makes cloth bunch up and it doesn't seem to improve collisions at all. I prefer a setting of two. Property weights are another powerful tool like pin stiffness that converts settings into something that you control using vertex groups and weight painting. Where vertices are weight painted zero, they are affected by the global settings only. The structural group in combination with the pin group allows cloth to have different properties depending on its vertex weight. You can see that adjusting max tension, which controls stretching, has a bigger effect than adjusting the max compression. Max shearing is about the side-to-side -side stretching of the cloth. The apron is weight painted with a value of 1, everything else 0. At 2.0, the apron is slightly more subdued and tends to be narrower at the bottom. At 0 0.01, the apron is freer and wider at the base. Max bending and bend group is a major way to differentiate the type of material the cloth is made of. I've weight painted the vest in the bend vertex group with a value of 1, the other cloth layers at zero and they are unaffected by this setting. The MAC bending value of five is a medium weight leather, 10 more like a thick leather that resists wrinkling, one like a soft fashion leather that wrinkles easily. Field weights, gravity setting. While a standard gravity setting of one gives realistic results for characters at real world scales, higher settings can dampen cloth, lower settings can make it more floaty. Gravity can be creatively animated to allow clothing to flip up or make it slam down throughout an animation. Thank you for watching Advanced Cloth 1. My next video in the Advanced Cloth series is Evolving Cloth Solutions. Upcoming videos will cover creating and simulating long hair with the particle system, rigging and skinning solutions, animating and space switching, track reading, facial animation, and more. If you found this video useful, hit that like button. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we post new tutorials and demonstrations.